future hand auger operators. My name is Elliot Moravec and I'm a mechanical engineer with IDP. Uh, I hope today to give a brief rundown of what's in a hand auger kit, how to use it, and what to do if things go wrong. Um, so bear with me here, this is my first informational video. Uh, first, the training we're going to look at um, with the IDVO hand auger systems. And here in front of me I have a 4 inch hand auger. We also um, ship a 3 inch version of this, but um, for our purposes they're basically interchangeable. Um, so yeah, what's, what's, uh, let's start off with a general overview of what, what is shipped with an IDVO hand auger system. Um, so when you show up in Antarctica, Greenland, or your field site, uh, you'll have two bags. One is a two meter bag on the right here. The other is a one meter bag. Um, the different lengths are just for the different core barrels. Um, each bag will have its own set of extensions and various tools, other um, equipment you'll need for hand augury. Um, so before we get too far into things, I guess the first thing I'll say is everything I will discuss here is available in the hand auger manual. You can find this uh, primarily shipped with the bag or also you can download it from icedrill.org. Um, yeah, that's a good reference and it really will cover everything I discussed today. Um, the other thing is just uh, a brief plug for what you should get with your SIP. Um, I recommend requesting uh, well, with the hand auger system, you don't need to request a whole lot. Um, I recommend requesting glycol for uh, any, any uh, recovery issues, say if you get the hand auger stuck down a hole. Um, we are now transitioning to glycol because ethanol has been inter interfering with our uh, flights. Uh, so we recommend that. Um, also, I would recommend just getting a shovel um, in case you need to do any site prep to uh, remove loose snow so it's not falling down a hole on top of the hand auger. And yeah, that's, that's kind of it for basic SIP requests. Um, if you add a sidewinder, it gets a little more complicated, but we'll cover that in a later video. Okay, uh, so now that I've given my SIP requests and my general overview, um, what you see in front of me here is everything that's gonna be shipped with the hand auger kit. Um, another key thing I'll point out is each kit will have an inventory list that you can go through before you leave for your field project to see what all should be included and go through this checklist here and just make sure everything is included and everything's ready to go. Um, but yeah, so all these items here will be shipped in the one meter bag. Um, there's a tool bag which has various assorted tools um, that will also have a small parts kit. The small parts kit is uh, going to have all your cutters and core dogs. Zoom in on that there. Um, standardly, we've been shipping the cutter head pretty much set up. So it'll have core dogs and cutters pre-installed. Um, this is an example of the cutter head with the um, guard on it. Um, this is something new we've been implementing. It just twists on and off like that. And then these tabs here line up with the core dog windows and snap on. So that's for protecting operators and users from the sharp cutters when not in use. Um, yeah, so that's kind of an overview. On the right side here, these are more of our recovery tools and we'll get into that once we've set up ahead. So I'll briefly just give a rundown of the different style of uh, core dogs and shoes we have with our hand auger kits. Um, so here you can see we have a cutter. It has a slot there for the dowel pins and also a threaded hole which attaches it to the cutter head. Um, to install a cutter, you slide the cutter onto the dowel pins like that. And then you would install the socket head cap screw um, through this hole. One thing to note is there's two kinds of socket head cap screws. It's important to use the low head version, which looks like this, so it doesn't protrude too far past the cutter when installed. That can sometimes trip people up. Um, these other ones with the bigger head are for attaching the head to the core barrel. Um, so yeah, uh, each, each kit will have spare cutters. Um, you can keep tabs on how sharp your cutters are by just visually inspecting them for any dents or dings. Um, they're shipped with wax just to protect that cutting surface from getting dull and shipping. So this obviously comes off before use. Um, 
Yeah, and then the other thing that you can futz with and install on your head are the core dogs. There are two options of core dogs. There's a longer core dog and a shorter core dog. Um, these are just to give you uh, uh, something to change for different fern hardnesses. So the longer core dog works better in soft fern when you're starting your hole. The shorter core dog works better in harder fern as it transitions into ice. Um, you'll have to play around uh, with the core dogs in the field just to figure out what works best for your field site. Um, along with the core dogs, we also ship three different kinds of core dog springs. The core dogs will come installed on your cutter head just as a way to simplify things for use. But if you need to make adjustments in the field, there's three spring options. Um, they're separated in these three compartments. There's a stiff spring, uh, which is going to work best with the shorter core dog and harder ice. There's a medium spring for general use, and then there's a real light spring, which you can use with a longer core dog and soft fern and near the surface. Um, Another thing that you can adjust and play with are the cutter shoes. So with our hand auger systems, we have three different cutter shoes. That might be hard to see on camera, but each cutter shoe is labeled with a stamped indentation on the fastener head. There is a, this is a nine actually. So yeah, there's a nine, a seven, and a five, which correspond to um, how, how coarse of a cut you wanna make. Um, so yeah, it, the number here corresponds to the pitch that you'll be cutting with the hand auger. So five is the finest pitch, seven is a medium pitch, and then the nine here is the, the coarsest or the thickest pitch. So we have them organized kind of so that it makes sense. So when you're drilling ice, you're gonna wanna be using a finer pitch um, shoe and also a harder spring and these are likewise organized with the medium, the medium pitch uh, shoes and the medium springs and the coarse pitch shoes and the lighter springs. Obviously you can mix and match these as you see fit and it's going to take some tuning and playing around in the field to find a perfect combination for your conditions, but that's just a general layout of uh, how we ship the system. Uh, the other thing I'll mention with the cutter head is the collets. So with every hand auger system, we ship some tapered collets that can substitute in place for core dogs. Um, th these collets have like a one-way trap feature to them um, and the head is tapered along with the collet. So when you go to use your collet, um, you're gonna have to remove your head first and then insert the collet with noting the tapered edge going down hole like this. And that'll catch on the tapered surface of the cutter head um, the important thing to know about using a collet is when you have a collet installed, you cannot have a core dog installed um, because obviously the core dog is going to interfere here with the collet. Um, the collet works best for soft, soft snow and fern and can uh, really help out if you're getting a lot of core dog streaking. So the core dogs are ripping through the core, but you're not capturing that core. So yeah, these will be in this bag when you receive it. So, having covered kind of the main adjustments with the cutter head, uh, the only other thing that you'll really be able to tune when you're in the field is the length of the chips, chip catcher. So this, uh, if you're not familiar, gets installed uh, inside your core barrel. The purpose of this chip catcher is to uh, capture, separate the chips from your drilled ice core. Typically, this is only used with the two meter barrel. And so you can imagine when you're drilling an ice core, this lives inside this barrel. And as the chips fall down through these windows, they don't collect on top of the core. And this just helps from chips wedging your core in the lower part of the barrel and stopping your progress. And as you can see, there's a knot tied in this and you can play with the length of this uh, so that you're optimizing how much core you can take each run. So as you transition from snow to fern to ice, you'll start to notice that you can get less and less core as, as the cuttings um, take up a larger portion of your core barrel. So yeah, something to, something to note there um, in terms of another adjustment you can make in the field with your hand auger. Um, so now that I've kind of given a brief overview of what's in the kit and some of the adjustments you can make, 
I just want to point out um, some best practices for drilling. So the number one thing that I can recommend is don't drill in warm conditions. And it sounds obvious, but even at 25F or so, you'll start to see melting on the surface on metal parts that are exposed to the sun. Um, any liquid water is your enemy, and you really want to avoid that. Um, so if possible, erect uh, a windscreen or a shade structure if you're expecting warm conditions. And when you're at the surface, really I emphasize to keep the barrel out of the sunlight at all costs. Um, yeah, if you warm up a barrel too much, you can uh, cold soak it down hole, but that, uh, that should only be attempted if you're quite confident your drill isn't going to refreeze down hole. So there's, you've removed all the liquid water and um, you need to cold soak it before the next drill run. Um, the other thing I'll really emphasize is do not over drill. And so what I mean by that is say you're using the one meter barrel and you're starting your hole and you drill a meter and then don't realize that the core barrel is full and you keep drilling another half a meter. Well, now all of a sudden you have half a meter chips on top of your core barrel and there's no way to capture those chips and they really just serve to wedge your whole drill system down hole. And you'll be uh, sad when you can't get your hand auger back because all the chips on top of it. Um, one of the kind of neat features of the hand auger system is the core barrel adapter. So this piece here um, is what connects to your extensions. You can see how there's three reflective patches on there. So in part, uh, with ship with a toolkit, let's see where it plugs in. Okay. Well, I don't know where that mirror went, but uh, a standard piece we ship with the toolkit is a little signaling mirror and you can basically flash the signaling mirror and see these reflective patches from the surface. Say if you're deeper down hole and you want to see if you've somehow over drilled or, or packed chips on top of your core barrel. So those are my, those are my two tips for um, yeah, not getting the drill stuck. In terms of uh, operation and best practices, um, you really, when you're using the hand auger, you don't have to put a lot of downward force. You really want to want to try to suspend the drill string and just cut evenly and consistently. Um, you don't you don't want to be forcing the, the auger in and just rely on the weight of the hand auger and kind of let the tool do the work. Um, but yeah, that's kind of the, the gist of it. And in general, you'll have better luck with chip transport if you're cutting bigger, coarser chips that are cold. Um, that works best for just transporting the chips up the auger and um, yeah, you'll have good results with bigger chips. And to produce those bigger chips, you can work with a coarser, coarser uh, uh, shoe, which is again corresponding to the bigger numbers on these shoes. Um, yeah, that's, uh, that's a good, good best practices. Um, in terms of what happens if stuff goes wrong, um, there's a couple of tools we'll ship with the hand auger. Uh, one thing that I always recommend is to use a hole cover when you're drilling. So when you bring your hand auger out of the hole, immediately cover that hole with a piece of foam or a piece of plywood. Um, it's quite frequent, it's quite common to drop small metal pieces or fumble a tool or a screwdriver. Um, and that can easily just bounce down a hole, which is uh, always a bad day. And if you realize something is down a hole, uh, first step is stop drilling. Don't try to core through it with the hand auger immediately. Um, you'll just ding up the cutters and, and wreck, the, wreck the hand auger. Your first, your first tool, your first best option is to use the recovery magnet. So that's what this is. It's a high strength magnet just on some P cord. Um, it's not always 100% foolproof if there's chips or if the object you've dropped is lodged down hole, but it's a good first, first step to try to recover any small pieces or metallic items. Um, obviously they have to be magnetic. Another recovery tool we ship with the hand auger um, is an extension recovery. So this is just, uh, say say you're drilling and somehow you forgot to pin a connection or you or you drop an extension down hole This tool is meant to go down and recover that extension. So it's got uh, a Snap and it goes like this actually. It's got two spring-loaded detent pins and it's meant to go over the top of the tool and snap in place and that way you trap your uh, extension and can bring it to the surface so this would just get mounted on the end of any of these other extensions to go fishing with. So yeah, those are the, those are the three main recovery options. 
Um, say you get your your uh, auger stuck for whatever reason. It's you've over drilled or you've um, sent a wet barrel down the hole. Um, to add glycol down the hole, the best way is to do it in short shots, waiting maybe a half an hour to an hour in between each shot. And you'll want to basically use use the drill rod as a as a delivery method, so you can basically just pour the glycol so it runs down on the drill rod and that will do the best, be the best way to deliver it directly to your core barrel. That's probably what's causing the hang up down hole. Um, yeah, aside from that, uh, let's see if I have anything else on my list here to cover. Yeah, so the last thing I'll say is when you're done hand augering, um, we really appreciate it if you can dry out your kits before shipping them back to Madison. Um, when you're back in McMurdo or wherever, uh, it's really appreciated if you can unpack your kits and dry all the components out so we don't get uh, rusty, sad hand augers. And then also, again, hold on to your inventory sheet and just double check and make sure you have um, all, the, all the equipment that was originally sent with it. Um, otherwise, then, I think that concludes our, our brief video here on hand auger operations. Um, for any questions, uh, just follow up with one of our members of the IDP engineering team or Chrissy Swanee and yeah, we'll be happy to help you out. So thanks for watching and uh, yeah, stay tuned for the next installment.